this episode of the award-winning Here For It podcast is brought to you by The Ghetto. Woo, child, The Ghetto. You ghetto. talking about um, the Queen Supreme Court or are you talking about the BET Awards? It's the so Ghetto different. Awards, a.k.a. Oh. the EBT Awards, BKA the BT, <laughs> BET Awards. BKA Misty C twerking on the Queen Supreme Court. Ugh. This was like the most unwatchable BET Awards ever. And it's not just because Be- Beyonce wasn't there. It was just because it was horrible from start to finish. Except Yolanda Adams. Outside of Yolanda Adams, they could have just kept the whole shit. And my thing is, why is um, Messi C even on the Queen Supreme Court? Because uh, I thought he went back to being heterosexual. He had went back to his baby mama, but then he left her and then moved to Atlanta I um, I don't know. Just the ghetto. <laughs> the, the ghetto. ghetto. The whole my whole life this week. Woo child. The ghetto. Um, where the fuck was Tony and Tamia for the Anita Baker tribute? Ooh, Tamia. Tamia wow. and Tony's careers were made by Anita Baker. No shade. Love them both. Can't live my life without either one of them, but they could not have had a music career without Anita Baker. And for them to be noticeably absent from the Anita Baker tribute, it's a shame. That's why I was the ghetto. (laughs) My name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet at Ronald Matters and, of course, RonaldMatters.com. I am the Superman, T-H-E-E-S-U-P-A-M-A-N. And you can find me on Black People Meet. I am a.k.a. The Booty Beast. BKA the Black Chandler. What's the Black ch- What? The Black Chandler? What that is? Is that Friends or is that Fraser? Yeah. Ch- or is it Chandler, Chandler was from Friends. Oh, okay. Oh, the white um, version of Insecure. Cool. Yeah. So that makes I'm Chandler. <laughs> you Today, June 27th, is National HIV Testing Day. Do you have good it- things to say about that? It is, and I will definitely cover that in sexual health. Uh, Our icebreaker this week is in honor of Cardi B, who has announced that she got married to Off Key in a bedroom. Um, And also, today is the three-year anniversary of the Supreme Court's decision to let boys marry boys. So, our icebreaker is... Men marry men, because boys don't have nothing in the name of of Facebook. (laughs) Wow. Them the boys you be talking to. Um... (laughs) Where would your dream wedding be? Well, I've always said that um, I want to do a backyard barbecue. I It was so real for me, um, July 3rd weekend. I don't forget which year it was, but Maxwell, fortunate to have you, girl. I'm so glad mm. you in my world. What year did they come out? So it was 4th of July weekend, and my uncle had said, well, he was my second cousin, but he was old enough to be an uncle. My wow. uncle. So he was like, this is very important. I need everybody to come to my house in Mississippi um, for 4th of July. (laughs) Like the fuck? So we was already turned off because we were like, this is who I would drive. But he just said it's really, really important. And so, you know, like he's never really been one to, well, no. The thing is, he was the uncle that always helped people. Like if you said you needed $300 for your rent, he would help you. Or if you needed somebody to babysit the kids, he would talk his wife into babysitting the kids. Or come and come to Memphis to pick them up. That's the gag. Oh, um, wow. And so, like when he said something was important, this was the uncle. Okay, so he said it's important. We have to do it. So we all get down there, and then he announced that they got married the day before, and this um, barbecue reception for the Fourth of July was their wedding for everybody who attended and i was like oh my gosh like one of my like favorite uncles is like well second cousin but old enough to be an uncle he's married like oh my gosh i'm so happy for him because they had been together they had like five or six children they had just oh this is not a boy then oh they had just bought a house the year before down in mississippi um so it was like really great and of course it was fourth of july the fireworks it was just, and I was like, wow, I want my wedding to be like this. So I've always envisioned my wedding being like a barbecue, no shade. I would just want to put good money on the ribs, um, do a poll of who should make the coleslaw, because, you know, people make coleslaw different. Um, so and then I just want to 
spend good money on the meat, spend good money on the alcohol, and spend good money on good money on fireworks. And that's how the way I envision my wedding ever since. Out down home country. I like that. I know. Work out. Well, as long as I can wear my Daisy Dukes, I'm coming. It's um, gonna be Fourth of July, so please do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my dream wedding. I'm pretty sure I would love to have a wedding in uh, Vieques, Puerto Rico. <gasps> Vieques, Puerto Rico is an island um, that belongs to Puerto Rico, so it's still technically U.S. territory. Because I know if I invite my family, no they got passports. <laughs> they got the passports. <laughs> so I wanted to do something that's fun and exotic, but um, where they can actually come. So uh, it would be Vieques, Puerto Rico. It's an island off the coast of Puerto Rico that is. Amazing. You bitches yeah. can't even Water- spell Vieques. I looked up this word, they, bitch. <laughs> they, prob- they probably can't, but as long as they can get the plane ticket to come, that's that's all that matters. Um, but Vieques is like this gorgeous, beautiful, small island off the coast of Puerto Rico. Um, you take a ferry out there. It's like a 20 to 30 minute ferry to get over there, uh, but it has waterfalls. It's got horseback riding. It's, so it's got uh, villas. It's got rainforest. It's gorgeous. It's, it's so many beautiful. Wow. And I would love to, you know, expose definitely family members that have never seen anything like that and then have a great wedding, you know, moment like that in a place like that. So if I had a dream wedding, it would be in Vieques, Puerto Rico. Just up for our listeners, because y'all really can't spell this. It's V-I-E-Q-U-E-S. It's so pretty. Google images. But, yeah, but the Spanish pronunciation is Vieques because B instead of V. So... Locally, they call it Vieques. Um, oh, Americans are probably gonna call pretty. it Vieques. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Wow, that was good. Shout out to Absolutely. You. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> on to the mess of this week. Um, the first story I wanted to um, talk about was uh, the funniest to me. It, because um, everybody on the right thought that it was so egregious and so offensive, and how could this happen in our United States of America? Sarah Sanders got um, kicked out of a restaurant <laughs> in Northern Virginia, and it was fucking poetic justice. Um, I am on the side that we should definitely be protesting these people that are doing such harm to our country, destroying the Constitution, destroying uh, the values that our country has supposedly been held up by for hundreds of years. And now everything is changing and everything is becoming more white nationalist and people are allowed to lie to the public's face. And anytime you are allowed to lie to the levels of Sarah Sanders, yes, you should be able to be kicked out of restaurants. Um, the last time that I checked, Sarah Sanders is not in a protected class, and that's what they tell my gay ass every time I talk about discrimination. Hello. So, uh, Hello. when they tell my gay ass that Hello. I'm not in a protected class because I'm gay, then surely we can tell Sarah Sanders that she's not in a protected class because she's white, white conservative Republican liar. Um, there was a quote, and I, because this is so off the cuff, I don't have the source, and I hate that, but, um, there was a quote from, like, a congresswoman or something that said, Sarah Huckabee Sanders is a part of, um, you know, tearing away families, and they can't have, mothers can't have dinner with their, um, children, so why does Sarah Huckabee Sanders think that she can sit down and have dinner with her friends and family? Girl, move. It's 2,000 plus parents who don't have their kids right now to have dinner. Like, kids with autism. Kids who need to be breastfed. Some lady came um, out and said that she was reunited with her son after like nine months. And girl, child, he had a haircut. It looked like they barely bathed him. And were the clothes, uh, the current season of American Eagle, because that's the way the Trump administration pretends. Like, oh, bitch, we putting them in the Hollister, girl. At least um, her apostle current sees them minimum. I mean, but like, yeah, no, y'all aren't doing that. Quit lying. So for Sarah Huckabee Sanders, like, oh, I haven't held a press briefing in four days, which is my job. And I, on the weekend, I think I'm just going to go sit out in, in a restaurant and um, have dinner with my friends and family after tearing um, 
families apart. No, bitch. Get up there on that fucking podium and tell us what the fuck is going on. It's been four fucking days since you've been at work. You don't get to sit down and have dinner in peace. And then there's this whole, well, you know, if they start discrimination like this, then they just... But they, are, they, they already people. have. They, they already have. And that's my point is, it's not like, oh, well, this is a slippery slope. The slippery slope is people are being deported from this country while their kids are still left in this country in places that they don't know where their kids are. So ain't no slippery slope started. They started the slippery slope. I'm just saying, instead of the when they go low, we go high argument, when they go low, we go lower, is the only way we're going to win because we okay. tried that shit in 2016. We tried... <laughs> Right, you don't win no goddamn twerk contest by you know, pulling your uh pulling your skirt up. You pull your skirt <laughs> down and you get fucking down on the ground. Big you your knees, girl. Big your knees. Do a split. <laughs> you don't. That's not how you win. Big your um, knees. When they go racist, when they go xenophobic, when they go homophobic, when they go transphobic, we should go petty. And that's the fucking bottom line for 2018 and for 2020. You can't let them go. And do all of this fucked up shit to the country to to regular Americans and people that want to come to America America to be Americans and then just be like oh well no they should get a pass because I'm, not all. I'm, I'm putting my knee pads on and we going low how about that <laughs> we gonna buck that's what we gonna do that's what we gonna do so I was absolutely here for it, getting seeing her ass get kicked out of a fucking restaurant I was absolutely here for Christian Nielsen getting booed out of a restaurant and I'm absolutely still here for Stephen Miller's ass Mexican restaurant the what is she the housing secretary what is she the DHS the Homeland Security um why, and why the fuck would you take your ass anywhere near a Mexican restaurant why? <laughs> what's your heart and she kicking she's gonna go in the hood after just Throwing shade at the hood. Bitch, no, the hood is here. The ghetto. <laughs> the ghetto. The ghetto's not here for you. <laughs> and, and so, lastly, um, until we start talking about firing these booger wolf face ass bitches, I'm not concerned about no restaurants that they get put out of. I hope they get put out of uh Coles too, because we know that's where they fuck they shop mm -hmm. at. Um they got the Jennifer Lopez collection at Coles. <laughs> <laughs> that means that means they won't fit in it. Uh -oh. So there's uh -oh. that. <laughs> Um, like Beyonce forgetting Jay Z was even on the stage at one of her recent concerts. She's like, "Thanks, uh, have a good night." And then she looked to the left. She's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> that nigga here. Uh, like Beyonce forgetting that. Uh, it appears that Lee Daniels forgot to give Dame Dash his two million dollars back from Precious, oh, and um, Dame Dash had some words for him in public. I was frankly. Shocked and surprised that he did not catch the fade right there in that conversation. Yeah. Um, was he mocked? Uh, I mean, like, who transcribed this? I was so people confused. were reading lips. They, it was <laughs> it's some crafty girls out there. The gr the girls were reading lips and transcribing the words from red lips. Mm -mm. Um, apparently, one of his people was also the one that was filming the video because Dames? they knew. Yeah, yeah, one of Dame's people oh, because okay. Dame's been trying to get in contact with him. For years, apparently, two, two million dollars, bitch. About two, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have, to, I wouldn't have had to catch you out in the public. I would have showed up at your house about two million dollars. Okay. I so when precious that part, came, 2012. Precious been <laughs> how long? Precious been out. <laughs> I just thought about it. how fucking long precious been out. Precious been out long enough to be in the dollar bin right now. So I I don't understand why it's taking him this long to come and find his two million dollars. Um, but at the end of the conversation, Lee Daniels was like, "Oh, I'm gonna get you your money. I'm gonna get you your money. Just please." Two thousand nine. Wow. Wow. It's been almost, almost ten a years. Decade. Yeah. So they definitely started putting it together in like two thousand eight, two thousand maybe like two thousand seven because he said Lee. I remember Lee Daniels struggling to get the Oprah endorsement for the distribution deal. So he definitely started working on this in like 2007, 2008 ish. It came out in 2009. But it it does explain why Monique was um paid $50,000 and was mm. not paid to promote it. I don't agree with her tactics still. Mm. Uh but it it does explain the budgeting of the movie and the budgeting of how they pay actors and actresses. He said Dame said don't make me sue you and take this public. I was like, well, I don't know why. Like, I, take what, my number, no and Lee was like, "Take my number down. I'm gonna call you. Just take your phone out and take my number down. We can talk later." No, bitch. <laughs> you can sign me a check right I'm now. I'm trying to go to VAK. V who you say? VAK to <laughs> for the wedding. <laughs> I need my damn payment for the um, <laughs> bridesmaids. 
dresses. What's up? I don't know. I don't know, but whatever it is, uh, Dame Dash probably got that $2 million at this point by now because the way he rolled up on him and the way that Lee Daniels looked shook, scared, terrified. And his little scarf. All right. A little Bless our teeth. heart. Bless our heart. Um, next, um, RuPaul's Drag Race is wrapping up. Your favorite um, show? No, Pose is Uh-oh. my favorite show. I uh, told Twitter that very recently. Pose is extremely, extremely better than and greater than uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, especially at this point. But um, I want to address the reunion because there was a moment, there was actually a couple moments that the internet took um, and ran with. Um, the biggest one being the Vixen's exit from the reunion. So I, I absolutely understand why she did it and i agree with her especially watching her explanation videos and a couple of other girls explanation videos after the event happened it did confirm you know what i was saying probably a week ago two weeks ago that that somebody did say vixen won you know like the fan vote but it was taken away from her and given to uh, monet exchange allegedly we'll find out thursday um, but it, it definitely looks like that that is something that's coming to fruition. I think that the Vixen was absolutely right in just leaving because it was nothing that she could say, nothing that she could argue with RuPaul herself, himself, um, and would come out, you know, on top and uh, <laughs> no pun intended, um, would come out on top or come out winning an argument because, mm-hmm. She was made to look this certain way, even though she had so many highlighted moments. Um, and I juxtaposed this with um, Kim Zosiak on Real Housewives of Atlanta, where something similar somewhat took place, where Kim Zosiak was running away and, you know, just exited, you know, the reunion and was mm-hmm. it was all because of the editing and this and that. And the results that we saw was Kim Zosiak really had nothing but negative shit to do on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Whereas the Vixen did have real conversations, real moments that weren't highlighted by RuPaul. Uh, The Vixen talked about it in this video that she put on YouTube shortly after the reunion where she never talked about, you know, her greatest moments and what she looked like or her real world conversation that she had with Aquaria that was really important and important to have. But she went immediately into so this argument with Eureka and her being the villain and all of this. And then she just saw where she just couldn't win and said, OK, well, I was here for my fans. Thank you, guys. Thank you for my, you know, everything that the fans have done for me. Y'all have a good night. And then exited peacefully. And so I thought she was right in that moment. <sighs> just the part where you want me to give my colorful commentary. Sure. Okay. So my favorite is problematic. Yes. Quite. Quite. Um. Uh, there was not a moment allowed for Vixen to highlight some of the successes where um she brought up racial bias and the way that it would look into the cameras. Not look into the cameras. Amen. Um, with Aquaria and some of the other things where, uh, I feel like she harped on it a little bit too long, but. That Eureka is a big baby, child. No pun intended. Not in the the best light. Um, and she Rue went straight to the drama. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were and also, she didn't do that. And she didn't do that for anybody else because, um, as she noted in the video that she posted on YouTube, like when she started off with Miss Vanjie and when she went to um mm-hmm. Yua Yamasaki, it was oh well, how has drag changed your life? How much money have you made? How much? How is your coming out story? They all had those type of questions, and then when she started with the Vixen, it was straight into, oh well, girl, you the villain, huh? How how's the fighting been? What? <laughs> I don't um, even get a softball question. And so I understand um, that there was like two soft throws for strike one and strike two, and then she went to Vixen and was trying to, you know, strike out, hit a home run, or wherever the direction Rue had aimed. But also, um, it's not about what you're called, it's about what you answer to. So, yes, she did answer Rue, but she 
could have taken the conversation another way. She could have led her answer with those um, positive things the same way Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Kellyanne Conway and Scaramucci got up here at the press uh, briefing room and lied about things and what do we call it? Divert girl. So I feel like if the vixen felt that way, the vixen could have done that. Maybe the vixen felt safe. Maybe she felt like the person who, like Ruth said, I brought her on this show because I knew she was a star. So Ruth felt that maybe she felt that way, but didn't see that. But when she noticed Ruth wasn't going that way, there was, and then Ruth was like, you, or you could have just been quiet. You could have just been quiet. I'm like, no, girl. No. Cause then I would have ended up like Cameron Michaels with no camera time, and then all the girls think I'm fake, which I'm not. Cause I don't mind busting a cap in and one of these bitches. I'm from Chicago. Um, she had four times. She had four times the amount of camera time. Like they did the rollback of the time that Vixen was actually on screen. She had four times the amount of camera time than Cameron, um, and um, what's the other white girl's name? Aquaria even uh-huh. had. And they're in the top four. So she was good. Well, TV. He's not even a good public speaker. So, and I yeah. was watching something else. I was watching a video on Instagram where she was, the people had asked her, why does she um, deserve to win? And she was like, I, ooh, I, ooh. y'all know I'm not good, a good speaker. Just vote for me. Hashtag Team Aquaria. <laughs> Bitch, no. If this was a pageant girl, you would have lost. What kind of dream is this? If this was a real world pageant, she would have lost. But right. Like, right now, she's the contender to win. So I'm she just. She probably is going to win. Um, and that's why I'm like, this shit is the 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 page is pulled. I don't Ooh. get it at this point. Because what the Vixen was highlighting is actually what Jasmine Masters has said maybe two years ago, maybe it was even a year ago that RuPaul's drag race is killing drag. And I didn't believe it because it looked like Jasmine Masters was coming from a place of petty, which I understand. Oh, but yeah. but it looked like Jasmine Masters was coming from a place of petty of oh well the, the queens have to be looking like this and they have to come out with body suits and shapes and i was like well jazz mess that ain't never been your thing so that's why you're hating on it but it looks like yeah in hindsight it really looks like she had a point because rupaul's drag race is a business and that's why we had trixie mattel win the last fucking Uh uh, uh, (laughs) all-stars and that's probably why we're gonna why we're gonna have Aquaria win this one because they're both already hits on social media and their win is gonna mean so much more for the ratings of the show for this season in syndication and then the next season. And so they're looking at it as a business and not as a we really do need a next drag superstar that's gonna carry a message and do something in the community because the last ones ain't did shit in the motherfucking community but line their pockets. Uh oh. <clears throat> Deep. <laughs> the next one don't get no um, more shallow, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, the Unite the Right tour has been greenlit in the oh, city of is. in the city of Washington D.C. Um, it is poised to be this summer's um, uh, what was that city in Virginia, Charlottesville. Uh, it's oh. poised to be this city the, this summer and this city's Charlottesville. Uh, you will have the alt right, the Nazi expressionism people, uh, the extremely conservative people that yell that they aren't really racist, but they are racist. They will be having a full tour uh, in August in Washington D.C. And which um, for that? Is it Time Magazine? Uh, CNN. <laughs> CNN. <laughs> it was all over CNN. Um, because the the tour that they were they had been planning they've been planning the tour for about a year, um, it's called the Unite the Right tour, mm-hmm. AKA Unite the White. Um, they've been planning it for a year, but they hadn't got any um, businesses to sign on and say, yeah, you can come in our establishment, yeah, you can do these things. And they actually finally got greenlit this past week. Um, so I wanted to make sure that our listeners knew about it and definitely stayed away from that shit because it's going to be, it's going to be a shit show. It's going to be exactly like Charlottesville. Um, and I do believe that we should protest those type of things, but be careful, be vigilant and be cognizant that it's going to be more of the same of Charlottesville. It's going to be right in the middle of fucking Washington DC. And you can best believe that the current president is going to be promoting it. I don't have any colorful commentary. I'm just going to look up the dates and stay in the house. Yeah. I, and, and I don't even think it should just be a stay in the house day. I think it's, it should be more of 
us go go do something more black us go do something more gay day um don't I, I don't think it's right to even be in that the vicinity of these things again i'm 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 great with protest but go do something real black go do something real gay go do something real expressionist of who you are instead of you know being in the way and being near this crap um the other story was permit patty trended on twitter for a few days Chill. uh permit patty had some social media training because she knew in the midst of calling the police on a black woman for selling water outside of an establishment a child an eight-year-old child well the the woman and the child yeah her mother um we assume that she needed to hide her damn face because <laughs> the uh the woman started videotaping and she knew you know squatting she did behind the damn flower bed what you got a yeast infection girl what you squatting down for <laughs> permit patty knew that she did not want the smoke of social media Regardless, the, the smoke, yeah, the smoke, the, police. the smoke has come. <laughs> the smoke has come. So peppermint patty got on the news. Not the peppermint very patty, ne- permit patty. Oh, same. <laughs> peppermint permit. Yeah, her. Cool. She felt like you should have a permit to sell water. So in the city that they live in, was it Oakland? I want to say. Um, the apartment complex was right across the street from the baseball stadium. So um, a, a lot of traffic was going on around the stadium that day. So the eight-year-old girl was um, out telling people, yay, it's a hot day. Get you some cold water. I'm a little girl trying to go to Disneyland, Disney World, or Disney something, child. Eight years old. I don't know. Um, and then so Premier Patty was claims that she was upstairs in her apartment with the window up because it was such a... Whew, warm summer day and she could not enjoy her window being up because the the child was outside doing all this hooping and hollering the ghetto so she, <laughs> she went down st- bitch you live across the street from, like literally across the street from the state you live literally across it's always fireworks it's always big crowds going off it's always um girls trying to get tickets at the same it's so much going that little girl saying come get your water out, out outside the stadium was not on you like that that little eight-year-old girl saying, buy some water. It was not on you like that. You looked out your window and saw they were black. And you said, well, I want to go down to them and hush that fuss. And it didn't work. Yeah, it, it amazes me. Turns out me. she sells weed for dogs. What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. She's a that, small business owner who sells weed for dogs for their anxiety. If you got an anxious-ass dog, your dog barking louder and coughing and hollering louder than the damn eight-year-old girl. If your dog got anxiety like this, you got to yeah. tell them dog it, treats. It amazed, it amazed me for white America to be embracing it um, when the whitest pastime is for white kids to be out during the summer selling Girl Scout cookies. Nobody in the history of ever has called the police on white girls for selling Girl Scout cookies. It would be 68 degrees. Oh, they're coming outside. And you don't need nail permit to sell nail cookie. And I don't understand why the fuck this person would think it would be okay to be questioning whether somebody had a permit to sell water. Ask yourselves that. Ask yourselves that, America. <sighs> and that is this week's Hot Topics. Um, my ass got dragged and she was, oh my God, I can't speak at my convention that I was supposed to speak at. And oh my God, the number one retail place that sold my weed cookies for dogs. They dropped me and oh, I just lost everything. And it wasn't about race, it was about the noise. Bitch, you on my TV right now with this noise. Move. You are, right, you are the noise. Go to commercial. <laughs> What's coming up next in the weather or something, girl? Show me a traffic report. I don't want to see this bitch. <laughs> she is the traffic report. She's the traffic phone. <laughs> She's trash. Um, the other trash white woman, I just, I'm not even going to give her that much this week. Uh, Madonna spoke. Bye. Uh, next Ill. subject. <laughs> nope. Not doing it. I just want to say she, she wanted the heat and she wanted the smoke. She ain't and got she got going it. On. And she got it. She deserved it. And she got the dragon that she deserved. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, Hey, guys, make sure that you check out our Patreon, where we have plenty of bonus content, including pictures that are 
only for our Patreon subscribers, including videos that are only for our Patreon subscribers, and including nudes that are only for our Patreon subscribers. Oh, is they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you check out Here For It Pod at Patreon.com. Thank you. Oh, look at you promoting. You're a little entrepreneur yourself. You got a permit? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do have a permit <laughs> to promote Patreon. You're a little entrepreneur. What's up? I like entrepreneurship. Be, um. be, be permit Patty in these damn comments if y'all want to. <laughs> see, see if somebody don't get pulled up on. Oh, is it safe for me to go into social studies? It is. Okay, I want you to stay with me because I know you and I aren't the most religious. All right. This week in social studies, we're going to talk about a video I saw on the internet called YouTube. Is Satan the reason the ghetto. singer <laughs> by Bark Ballinger? Like, that's not like an R&B singer, but he's a white man who lives in Ohio who got married in 2008 after getting a master's in theology of some sort from some place. Go blue. Okay. Here we go. I'm depressed. Just, I got to go. I got to get through this. I have a point, y'all. Stay tuned. I got to sound excited so you can follow me. There are three main reasons why Satan may be keeping you single. <laughs> Satan uses... Shay, oh, this video also uses Bible references, which I've excluded from my, because I don't believe in the teachers of the Bible. If you have to subscribe right now, God bless you. Anyway, so Satan, Satan uses shame and condemnation. Um, things that you might be insecure about, like weight issues, if you've experienced um, sexual assault, domestic abuse, or if you've been cheated on. Like Satan be like, bitch, how can I hate? Satan be like, ooh, bitch, how can I hate? How can I make this bitch feel bad? Um, so if you're feeling like you're not good enough, then, of course, as Mark said in his video, you're a data loser. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, baby. Mark. You was a you're loser, loser baby. <laughs> you're a loser. <laughs> Just a loser. Shout out to Patty Lil. <laughs> okay. Um, you're a date lower on the food chain, and Satan might even have you convinced to stay away from dating, dating altogether. And you can't let child. You can't let Satan win, not on that one. Number two says Satan uses fear. So Superman, what are some of the things that you have seen other people? I'm trying to bring you in here. What are some things that you've seen other people do in their relationship? And you're like, mm mm, <laughs> who go check me, boo? What are some things that you see that other relationships have just like had you? Mm mm, not in mine. Um, people fucking their friends is probably one that's not for me. Um, Why they in I a mean, relationship with you? Oh no, no, no. I'm talking. I'm not, talking I'm about just like outside relationships. Things you've seen. Uh-huh. Oh, in my relationship? No, things you've seen other people do in their relationships. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Was people fucking uh-huh. their friends in other relationships? I was like, oh, mm-mm, wait a minute. <laughs> now this is, this is one thing to have you know a threesome with a random or y'all have sex buddies that y'all have things with that's one mm-hmm. thing but now y'all hold friends is in y'all relationship and in y'all bedroom no not for me so who am I gonna call when you get on my nerves <laughs> she'll be like well girl that did good to me so I ain't got nothing to say <laughs> yeah and that's probably gonna be the next relationship he jump into because he didn't found he he got a comforter and a friend, a pal and a confidant. I don't know. So he mm-hmm. don't have a comforter and a pillow. He tried over here. Hello, <laughs> this the couch is over there. Um, you go on the upstairs couch or the downstairs couch. Pick one. Get out of my face. No. But anyway, Satan uses fear. Um, sometimes you see a relationship fail and you're doomed to think like, oh my gosh, am I next? Is that gonna be me? And so Satan will use that to scare you um, and to believe that that will be your testimony. So basically, any unhealthy relationship, girl, you can't be here for it. And don't let Satan scare you into that. It's a paragraph I got to quote. Mark says, love and vulnerability are always paired together. So the solution is to find your validation, your wholeness, and your protection in God. If you're elevating a relationship so high that you lose yourself, if you lose it, you're just devastated and you feel like death, that's because you've elevated that relationship too high. Only Christ deserves that place in your heart. Give your heart first and foremost to God. When you are secure in God, 
you will then have enough courage and wisdom on when to be vulnerable with other people. Amen. At, from a Mark standpoint, yes, you better have, first and foremost, give it to God and all these other things he said. Number three, we're almost there. Satan uses idolatry. I was like, that's a big word. I like it. Um, if you want a relationship too bad, you will mess it up. And overzealousness will keep you single. I was like, ooh, overzealousness, another big word. Um, Size queen alert. <laughs> yeah, like seven syllables. I like seven. God doesn't bless his children with idols, Mark says. Other people, oh, Mark continues, other people don't want the pressure to feel their place in your heart that only God can feel. Amen. Amen, Mark. Um, so I watched this video and what I took away from it, even though I'm not a big um, Bible thumper, I do believe that there's a higher power than just me and Martell um, on here for a podcast coming together every Wednesday, you know. So It's Cleopatra I, coming <laughs> at you. I personally replace the word God with the word you. Other people don't want to feel, don't want the pressure to feel the place in your heart that only you can feel. You got to love yourself first, girl. Um, the second one says, give your heart first and foremost to you. How the hell you going to love somebody else if you don't love yourself? Can I get an A, B, and in here? Mark included. <laughs> girl. Um, and the last one um, is find your validation, your wholeness, and your protection in you. You are a whole person before Tradarius, rest in peace. Um, that's the wrong, I should say another name. Um, LaShawn from Jack comes into your life before um, this nigga on Grinder comes up. You have, you are valid. You don't have to find your validation in him. Someone to appreciate the things that you give into the world. They are appreciated. You are a whole person. You are valid. And first of all, and third of all, fifth of all, 17th of all, find your protection in yourself. Don't depend, don't depend on a man to do nothing for you. I can tell you from experience. These things will be four to five minutes late to a wedding. A miss a fume because he didn't feel like getting out of bed. These boys don't care. Like, babe, you got your 250 for the light bill? Uh, Can I pay you next week? And y'all both will be sitting in the dark. <laughs> Protect yourself. So, um, is Satan the reason you're single? No. You are the reason you are single because you are not confident in yourself and you are not investing enough in yourself. You are whole before you download them apps and before you go to them clubs. Can I get an amen or are you going to say something different? Or um, <clears throat> I think that all the empowerment um, knowledge that was given in the the piece of work that Mark put out did not need the religious aspect. You can do but the it empowerment. Was from a, it was, oh, okay, let me let you finish, okay. Yeah, you can do the empowerment stuff without assigning a religion to it because someone that's Hindu that reads that can get the same amount of empowerment from it that someone that's Muslim, that someone that's Christian mm -hmm. could get out of it if it didn't contain Jesus and Satan because God and they don't... Bible quotes. Yeah, they other people don't ascribe to the same shit that you ascribe to. And that's what I continue to argue with religious people about is you can be doing so much better when you stop being so exclusive. Um, and again, nothing that he was saying was ideally wrong, but you can take your religion out of it and still empower more people. That's all. Hey Amen. But because that's exactly what I did. I was like, I, I saw the video title. I, saw, I, I searched um, reasons why you're single. I was I knew that I wanted to approach dating for this week's topic, and a common phrase is "Is your type the reason?" I think that's what I said. Is your type the reason you're single? And so when that was the first thing that came up, I was like, "Why is this the first thing to come up? Is my type the reason why I'm single?" And you know, I watched the video. It had ninety thousand views at the time. Work. Um, and I. I was still able to receive the message, but I also took the Bible quotes and he quoted Ecclesiastes, Ephesians. I, is Ephesians the Old Testament or the New Testament? I don't even know. Oh. Um, he was he was quoting Bible stuff and I was like, okay, we're going to skip that part. 
But, you know, I did receive the message that I am enough for me. I am valid. Um, I am whole. Um, that I don't have any false gods. I can't wait for another man to come into my life and then make him. I can't be overzealous with my praise for him. Because what is that going to do? Empower him to think that he better than me. Hell fucking no. Bitch, I'm me. Well, you know, I feel that way. I'm just because I, I have that power. Um, but, mm, you know. I still receive the message, but I do agree that like if you if you needed to remove God from it and the Bible from it to receive the message, there it's a powerful message. Um and it's universal that you have to believe in yourself. I absolutely agree with that part. Again, um they should just make it <clears throat> a religious, not full of religion. Um this week's word of the day. Uh oh. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Damn it, man. This week's word of the day is speaking of whole and making yourself whole. Amen. Anaplasty. Who? Anaplasty. A N A A N A P L A N A P L A S T Y. Anaplasty. Reconstruction or restoration, especially by plastic surgery of mm. a lost or injured part. You too can have your mangina repaired if you steal enough money from the Salvation Army. What? <laughs> you be trying it. <laughs> so I I said the Salvation Army part to bring in Electro abundance. Electro abundance. <laughs> Stealing from the Salvation Army. Fuck it wasn't them. this this last week's episode, but it was a previous episode and it was really good as well. They don't like gay people. And I was tweeting it. <laughs> During the whole episode, and then like the writers and producers and things was retweeting me. Yeah, the Salvation Army don't care about gay people. They, they are don't. part of the church and trash. Fuck them. I don't like them. I don't love them. When the money come, homie, I turn the head of sound oh, sorry. So the category is HIV realness. Ain't no place this well. Okay, so back to the ain't no place. How much these cost? I'm I'm pressing images on Google Images. I hope I don't regret this. You do. You will. Okay. So, um, a lot of people that have um anal dysphoria, anal prolapse, they get anaplasties to restore themselves. Mm. And I figured that you know gay people should hear about that word because some of them may be in need of such services. The price on you uh, 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 It's not giving me okay. I'm trying to find out how much it costs. I'm Googling, but keep talking, uh huh. Well I was moving on past the word of the day into um sexual health slash my pose review uh because they intertwined beautifully. I was really excited about that this week. So again, like I said, the category is HIV awareness. Mm -hmm. Um, this week in Pose, they cover the HIV crisis again, and it was just extremely visceral. Um, I loved everything that they did with the episode uh, as far as testing. Again, today, as you guys are listening, is National HIV Testing Day. So just as they did in the episode, which I think was perfect timing, if you have not been tested in the last 30 days, you should be going to go get tested today. Today is the easiest day in the whole fucking country to get tested. If you are in the backwoods of Mississippi or in the concrete jungle of New York City, you can find some place where you can get tested absolutely free, absolutely confidentially. Um, and you can find out your status. This is extremely important to know whether you have it or not. As we saw in the episode, um, we saw people that were a little, um, the episode opposed, that were a little um, shaky about finding out whether they even had it or not or hadn't even been tested ever. Um, and you don't have to be that. We don't have to live in those same stigmas from the 80s of, well, everybody around me is dying of HIV, so, you know, all my lovers have had HIV, so I know I got it, but I ain't, haven't been tested in two years. You don't have to be that person. Or, well, I only slept with two guys, and I know he loved me so much, and he would never do nothing like this to me. 
So I don't have to get tested. You don't have to be that guy. You can be the guy that just gets tested because it's free, it's available, and then you know for sure. Um, the important part that um, I wanted to cover in sexual health was serial conversion, which they did talk about for like five seconds of the episode. And I'm excited that they even said the word serial conversion because you ain't never heard it on TV before. Okay, um. Everybody infected with HIV will serial convert at some stage. Only 80% of patients will notice any symptoms. And so the symptoms that Damon in the episode had got these flu-like symptoms um, and got this fever and threw up and all of that. days. A lot of people attribute that to HIV all the time. You can't find a gay man that doesn't have those symptoms at least once in his life and and just know he got the virus. Mm -mm. Every time. And even me. As a healthcare professional, I'm like, ooh, child, mm, I got the fever. <laughs> I got the throwing up. I'm losing a little weight. I'm a little scared. And hey, you know what you can do to beat that? Go get tested. Hey, Amen. Every time. Um, and so even if you do get those symptoms, they don't mean that you have the virus. Um, like I said, 80% of us will... Um, of patients will notice symptoms, but there's a 20% of people out there that will contract the virus that won't have any symptoms at all. They won't lose any weight. They will not gain no uh, fevers. They won't have any flu-like symptoms. They'll just go on living a typical lives, having HIV and or spreading HIV and won't know it. So you don't know whether you're in the 80% or in the 20% unless you're getting tested. Um, Serial conversion usually takes between one and three weeks. Um, but it could take up to six months in certain cases. So meaning you could really have the virus within your system and not test positive for it up to six months since you actually contracted the virus. And that is the importance of serial conversion. So knowing that, okay, well, I, I was a hoe in the crazy. summer, but I found love in December. Girl, child, you still might be in the period of serial yeah. conversion. Very much, very much in the period of serial conversion, and that's why it's important to continue to be tested, and that's why it's important to be having sex the safest way that you would like to have sex. And so, if the mm-hmm. safest way possible for you is have sex condoms with condoms every time, to have sex that way. If the safest way for you mm-hmm. is to have sex with prep and use discernment with who you're having sex with, and use condoms. Use that way. Don't just go out here willy nilly and just do whatever the the fuck your dick or your ass tell you to do. Spit on it, child. Put it in. Oh, that is so much fun, but child, mm-mm, no, mm-mm, I don't trust y'all like that. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I was young and I was already okay. Um, just to add to that, um, you can go to www.hiv.org. And in the top left corner, enter your zip code, and it will tell you locations near you. Um, I'm in D.C. Well, we're in D.C., so it's a lot of locations near D.C. But even if you are not in such a large city, www.hiv.gov and put in your zip code, and you can find help to get tested. Indeed, please do so. Again, today being National HIV Testing Day, there is no day where you cannot get tested more than today absolutely free absolutely confidential almost pain-free like you can get swabbed you can get a finger prick you can get blood drawn yeah well there's not many anal swabs anymore but um there's anyway workout (laughs) so again um the other thing i I forgot to say about uh pose was i live for the tina marie since we're about to move into songs for our soul, right. it's not the song for my soul, uh-uh. but I lived for the Tina Marie soundtrack that they had on this episode. It was so good. Uh, they again, be doing it. they, be the they do it every it. every episode that they have brought. The soundtrack has been a uh, fucking amazing. Um, I mean, it, oh, 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 and then the um the Gilead commercial was also amazing. Um, they they. Definitely told us what category we were on again this week. It was a whole different Gilead commercial with a trans girl, with people of color. Um, it was amazing. Again, they they are hitting the marks. And if you are not watching, I don't know what the fuck you are doing with your Sundays. I'm watching the BT Awards. The ghetto. The ghetto. 
The song for my soul this week um, is So Good by Big Sean featuring Cash Doll. Detroit in the house. I know that that makes you happy. <laughs> I don't know. What's the zip code? You got to say the zip code. So 313. 313. Okay, 313. So um, he said, Big Sean, I'm a splash. I'm a splash. Pop a pill. I won't even do the half. Do the whole thing. I'm a last. I'm a last. Pussy so good, I never fuck you in the ass. You got a good dick. This shit can barely fit. Like OJ Glove, you must acquit. And he just goes on. Let me how he gonna lick you. How he gonna make it last. How you gonna be screaming. And I'm like, yes, I'm gonna be screaming. I'm like, shit, what your name is again? What's your government? Because I'm not gonna call you Big Sean because I know your real name. Um, And then you gotta throw away the shade that he really five foot two. Uh, who cares? I don't. It's so good. It's all the same when you land lateral. Amen. Then Cash Dog comes in, and then she starts talking about she gonna you know, talk to none of her girls about the good dick she get because if the, they go try to test, you gonna have to fight that bitch. And I was like, you know what? This sounds very Memphis. So Detroit and Memphis coming together in a track. I can relate to this. So so good. Mm, ass so good. Puss so good. If I could quit my job and fuck you all day, shit, I would. <laughs> Work. Oh my god, I get um, giggly just thinking about it. I'm just trying to figure out if they actually did have sex to no, uh, do because he some... went to New York though. Would so that would that I don't would that mean? <laughs> the her boyfriend <laughs> broke up. Cash job boyfriend broke up what because she took a picture with Drake and he was like, "Yes, I know that there was her dream," and so she did this. So I'm gonna break up. And I was like, "So you literally?" Bro-. He was insecure about what they could have possibly done when they met. And so he broke up with Cash Dog. But I mean, like, nigga, he the number one rapper, the number one selling rapper of anybody. Even Nicki Minaj. He beats Nicki Minaj sales. I want to be the number one rapper at the time as an um, up-and-coming rapper in Detroit. Yes, I would like to meet that nigga and get a picture for my Instagram. My fans go live. And hopefully he'll feature me on something and I can get something sold. No shade. Because I love her to death, to bits. I just want her to be more commercial. I want her to get more visibility. Cash Dog. How you doing? Yeah. Um, and people are still confusing her with Dream Doll somehow. You silly. <laughs> I'm just saying. The song for my soul this week, um, <clears throat> I won't be neglected. I won't be denied. The pleasure of your kisses, the pleasure of your smile, I think you take for granted. I'll always be here just because I'm near. It doesn't mean I won't disappear. That is from my Detroit sister who got her Lifetime Achievement Award this week. She from Detroit? Absolutely. Anita Baker. Oh, my God. Yeah. We produce. We produce. I keep trying wow. to tell y'all. I Detroit keep out here. <laughs> so um, her song, Been So Long, uh, is one of my favorite Anita Baker songs ever. Um, it's one where she actually, you know, talked directly about somebody. Because sometimes you'd be talking about love, but it'd be like kind of incoherent, and you just like, oh, okay, that was cute. Um, but she like it looked like at this time when she wrote this song and produced and and sung this song that she was like really going through it with somebody. And so it was one of my favorites. It's definitely one of my favorite, um, you know, like auntie cleaning the house type music when you know you put your head wrap on and get your gloves and you clean the corners of every uh, inch of your house and be like oh, okay well I did my job on Sunday um, it's one of those songs mm-hmm. yeah yeah. you gotta clean the um, baseboards for Check. girls that got baseboards yes. <laughs> um, so yeah it's one of those type of songs but the lyrical content of it like I could tell that she was really talking about somebody um, and I loved it and again Kudos to her for her Lifetime Achievement Award because she has paved the way for so many girls' careers, as I talked about on the top of the episode. Tony Braxton would never have had a career in the first place and or a second chance at a career because Tony Braxton was like, oh, I'm going to retire. And then Anita Baker called her and said, girl, don't. And so we we (laughs) would... Right. And so we would not have gotten the last two Tony Braxton albums, the one she did by herself and the one she did with Babyface, if it was not for Anita Baker. And we would not have gotten a Tony Braxton 
whole catalog in the first place if it wasn't for Anita Baker saying, I don't want to do that. And then Tony Braxton saying, I guess I could do that. <laughs> no, Anita said, told L.A. Reid, why don't y'all let the girl do it well, in the demo? Yeah, why don't y'all let her do it? Right, why don't y'all let her do it, basically. So again, <laughs> we would not have a whole Tony Braxton. And I can't live without a Tony Braxton. So this is not a read, it's not shade. I can't live without Tony Braxton. But we would not have had it if it was not for an Anita Baker. And the same with Tamia. No shade. Song for my soul. Been so long. All right now. Um, thank you guys for leaving us comments on Apple Podcasts. Open up your purple app on if you have an iPhone. Search for our name here for it. Click the reviews tab and click write a review. Um, actually, this week we got two new reviews. So shout out to M Thompson 2018 who says, "Love the show. The two hosts have great." C- chemistry i have to say commentator i'm so used to saying it love the show the two hosts have great coming i'm about to say it again chemistry (laughs) thank you m thompson 2018 and at married to muscle underscore says i've been listening to this podcast for a while and i enjoy every moment of it you guys are great keep it up so i've been wondering like where do y'all listen to us there like do y'all listen to us like on the bus on the trains no pause um at the gym um, like where do y'all listen to us like at work while you're doing your morning reports because I know I'll listen back to the show and I'll be like cracking up when I'm doing my morning reports at work um, but thank you guys so much so much for listening to us everywhere that you listen to Here For A Podcast and thank you for leaving us comments everywhere you leave comments for Here For A Podcast which this week's includes our inbox y'all finally decided to get us some listener letters yay <laughs> um what is my listener letter intro? Let me find it. Um, it says, listener letters, send us your questions and comments to hereforitpod at gmail.com or to any inbox where you find us on social media. Somebody wrote on our wall on Patreon. <laughs> so, um, the first one is by Anonymous via Tumblr. They write, first, I have to say, um, I love you guys. You're dynamic and tremendous, and I'm here for it. Shout out to us being tremendous. Now, my topic is these girls, Kenya Moore allegedly, and Jalen Aaron from Chasing Atlanta, paying people to play their dates. Sidebar, Martell, I feel strongly <laughs> that he was the one DMing you from Chasing Atlanta. Chasing Atlanta. The ghetto. How did you guys feel about it, yay or nay? What's the question? Girls paying for dates. Now my topic is the girls paying for people to play their dates. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> um, I just said them five seconds ago the ghetto. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I understand the need if you are currently and you're about to be on um a reality show for having someone to help your storyline if you need a relationship. So I understand the need. Um, I for myself, I wouldn't because if I'm on a reality show and y'all hired me to be on a reality show, y'all didn't hire me and that nigga y'all hired me. Um, so I'm the show. And I'm not splitting my check. And I'm I'm definitely not splitting, sharing, giving a quarter piece, a deposit, none of that to no other nigga. So uh for me, I wouldn't do it, but I understand, you know, other people need that kind of um second part to their story for their stories to be relevant in reality TV. Um, as previously stated, I'm not splitting my check. Um, if someone calls me to be on a reality show, they understand that Ronald Matters has been a leader in the blogging industry for practically a decade. Here for a podcast is award winning, um, eight months into its inception and continues to be an outstanding and, as you said, tremendous and dynamic. Um, Bigly. (laughs) Ronald Matters can do all of those things. Ronald Matters has the platform to carry um, a TV show, web series, a podcast, um, shit, a commercial. Sign me up. The check is mine and not mine and that niggas. Um, so that's all I got for that. Uh, our second question says. Shout out to Anonymous for trying to be shady, though. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that your shade, though. Via yeah. Tumblr. Bitch. Here, oh, we're also on Tumblr. Just like, We're everywhere, y'all. Hereforpod.tumblr.com. Just we're on there. I only shared, like, the podcast episodes. So, I mean, I don't, I'm just trying to make sure we're, you know. But shout out to 
Tumblr messages. The second listener letter, Sean writes on our Patreon wall. Thank you so much, Sean, for donating to our Patreon. We're going to do our best to give an amazing answer. Um, if shade is received, you know it comes from love and not from a shady place. Sean, I apologize in advance. <laughs> Sean says, because it's, it's, I, I feel, anyway, Sean writes, I am someone who likes to combine holistic treatments with modern medicine. I have been trying to find a therapist that specializes in integrative medicine, integrative treatments. Problem is, they all seem to be white men and women. I live in San Francisco, so the programs are everywhere. I just would like to refine my search to a black gay male or female therapist who specializes in this. Do you all know of any resources that I could utilize? Thanks for all you do, Sean. Sean, um, get the fuck out of San Francisco. San Fran, bro. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think that there are a lot of um, holistic treatment specialists um, throughout the country, and the, the number is rising because it's becoming it's becoming the next um, field of chiropractic, chiropractic medicine. Like 30 years ago, nobody was like, oh, my God, nobody believed that chiropractic medicine worked. And that's the the vibe that holistic medicine is getting now. Um, I think that there are more throughout the country, but you have to look around your locale and say, this is a real white area. Why am I surprised that all the physicians are white? And also the the, the type of um, medicine that you're receiving typically there are only a lot of white people that are studying it. So it's probably going to be a while before you can get a black holistic therapist. Um, but I still encourage you to go somewhere, somewhere a little more ethnic friendly. No shape. Um, so I felt the same way. I, I do still, well, I personally support, um, integrative treatments because like sometimes it could just be getting massages when you know you tend to keep you calm when you tend to over, well, it appears as though you overreact. Cause when people tell me I do it, I'm like, I'm just being myself. I'm not overreacting. But, um, to, or if you need, um, very Eureka, <laughs> what is it called when you, they put the pins and needles. What is acupuncture. it? Acupuncture. If you feel like acupuncture is um, an additional of additional value to your medication, um, I, I hear acupuncture can be really great. Uh, but those things still aren't as studied as how to take a pill because, of course, the prescription drug industry has studied pills for like fifty years. So when you're saying like the holistic treatment of acupuncture or massage therapy and or, or even like cannabis you the federal government doesn't even study that yet because republicans are being trash so you're still in a space where um the treatment that you're looking for is very new um and there's going to be a lot of people there's going to be few people studying it but many of them won't be black mm -hmm. so i reached out to my four i know four people who have studied have masters in psychology either have a ls lc sw or ms it's acronyms and letters i reached out to all Licensed of them clinical social worker <laughs> i reached out to all of them because somebody f that supports my podcast wants an answer um and basically the only thing that all of them had to say was some insurance companies allow you to search for therapists by race now they didn't say sexuality they said race and so I feel like that's, and when I ask professionals, that's the only answer that they have to give. Yeah, I mean, find, finding somebody black and gay that does that subset of medicine is like finding a black gay unicorn. And I, and I think it's admirable that you want someone who's down for integrative treatments, but uh, the research just isn't there right now. And that's why you live in your life to the best that you can talking to your therapist about it the best you can. And all of us talking about mental health is so important because we cannot get the research dollars that we need if we continue like, mm, well, you know, we black, we don't talk about mental health. We gay, you know, we usually just over dramatic and all that. Is he not crazy? He just dramatic. No, I need or help. ADD or ADD. <laughs> I need help. So it's so important for all of us to live our best lives so we can get the research we need. So there can't be black, gay, 
um, therapists who use integrative methods with their approach to their patients. I'm excited about that. It makes me yeah, and, and absolutely um, crowdsourcing it. So everyone that's listening to this podcast, if you know a black or black and gay holistic therapist out there, please send us the name and we can get him some business, apparently. Hey man, um, especially him. especially if he's in the California area. And even if he's not in the California area, area he can do things via Skype um, and things like that over the phone with probably a potential client. So if you guys know of one, let us know, because I don't know none. I don't know any. I, I, I say really it properly. Feel like, I really feel, <laughs> no, I'm 313. I don't know none. <clears throat> and I'm sure there are many. I'm sure there are at least a handful. So, um, Sean, I hope that we can get an answer for you because that's very important and we appreciate your question. This week, I am here for it. I am here for it. Today, exactly, I listened to um, a UK-based podcast. I'm always, like, looking for, like, LA-based podcasts because there aren't that many based out there. And, like, UK podcasts, I'm interested with the black community and the UK is listening to. But that's just a whole... Another point. Today, I listened to a UK-based podcast called "Busy Being Black." A busy being black, <laughs> and I <laughs> that sounds like a whole different podcast. Being <laughs> black. Oh, mm. you have video forms. <laughs> Today, I listened to a UK-based podcast called "Busy Being Black," and I am absolutely here for it. Josh Rivers talked to advocate Phil Samba about coming out, men of color in media. And the importance of the hashtag Me, Him, Us campaign, the PrEP impact study in the UK, dating older men. Look, they talked about everything, okay? The conversation was outstanding. So go listen to Busy Being Black podcast. They talk about everything outstanding. And are they, they're, they're UK based and they're from the UK as well? Yes, um, Phil Samba is a black gay African who was born in the UK. I think Josh was born here, but he grew up over there. I'm not really sure. Don't quote me on that. But Josh is just so amazing. Um, he's the he works with Black Pride over there. I can't remember all the details, but he does so many things. And hosting the podcast, using his voice with the podcast, is one of the many things Josh Rivers does. So shout out to Josh, shout out to Busy Being Black, <laughs> um, and shout out to his intro song. It's really cute. Um, I'm here for it. Like talking about everything black, gay in the UK, because the Prep Impact Study field was saying they are both part of the Prep Impact Study over there, and it's not about is Prep working. It's about how many people will take Prep over there. What does it look like? Um, will it be mostly white men? Um, and Phil was saying that tra- the tr- black trans community is poorly represented in the study. Um, same which of here. Course, same here. And so you like it's so relatable when like you hear them talk about things going on. And every week, busy being black, whether they have a um, whether Josh has a person he's interviewing, or if it's just Josh Chow being Josh. Shout out to him being dynamic and the all the words the girl said we are busy being black is one of my favorite podcasts. Um, so. I'm here for it. Listen to Busy Being Black. Well, I am also here for something this week. Um, I don't know if this I think I feel like this might be two or three, four weeks in a row. Um, so Me positivity. Too. Yeah, right. Five month. Growth. Um, you need vitamin who, D. Twelve hours. The sun's out. I'm getting the same vitamin D that Beyonce was talking about on the <laughs> uh, album. Have you ever see the crowd go at eight shit. Um, but Malia Obama was not only spotted but was drinking at a gay lounge in Atlanta this past weekend. The older or the younger? Mal- Malia. She's the older. Yes. The one that's in college smoking weed to kiss some white boys at, at the festivals. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, Sasha cannot, Sasha can't do it yet. She ain't old enough, no. No. <laughs> but Malia was in Atlanta this week, um, and she was out at a gay lounge, and mm. she was just there and was you know hanging out with people having a drink um you know mingling people wanted to take pictures but she didn't quite take pictures with people Mm -hmm. but she was still being cool you know and hanging out with the gays 
and I can't reveal my source, but there were multiple people that saw her and talked about it on the internet um, outside of my source. And I was like, oh, I can't. I mean, I can see it, but I just I never would have thought that I would have heard that Malia Obama was hanging out at the gay club in Atlanta. Um, and so I'm absolutely here for it. So if if the Obama children are getting this progressive moment in their life where they can learn different things that they then they probably wouldn't have learned other ways, I want them to. And I want I want to see her at the gay club myself. That would be awesome. I, I would okay. buy Malia Obama a shot if I saw her at the gay club. Oh my god! And ask her for her daddy's number. So oh, I'm asking, like the Secret Service is gonna be on your ass in the in the way you like. So I'm absolutely here for it, Malia Obama. Keep coming out to the gay club. It is your favorite part of the show, um, not mine, because um, I don't drink that up much. Oh, okay, all right, work That's out. That's new. You know, I just started today. Oh, all right. All right. Time for what? our last call. It is. It is. It is. And so, again, for new listeners, if you have not been tuned in for the last 60 ish episodes, last call is where we grab a shot glass of alcohol. We take a shot and we say what our last call of the night is. Shout out to Malagro Tequila. It was on sale this week. Like fifteen dollars off, and I was like, "Um, add to cart." She's like, "Do you need a bag?" No, because I'm about <laughs> to start. Um, give me my receipt though, because I'm a black man in America. But no, I don't need no bag. My last call this week is to Miss Cracker and Aja from RuPaul's Drag Race. Even and though Aja. Pose is better, even though Pose is better, I was extremely excited to see <clears throat> Wild Presents picked both of them up for their own shows. Oh, and so, um. We will be getting new content from Miss Cracker and Aja. Um, supposedly at the end of the year. By the end of the year, they're going to start production this summer. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited for it because we get to see both of them um, in medium and not just out at the clubs doing shows and being booked for gigs. Um, I have been excited to see Aja's growth because I really did not like her during her season mm-hmm. at all. And when I saw her on All Stars of RuPaul's Drag Race, uh, I softened for her a little bit. I was like, oh, okay, she looks, she feels a little bit different. Like she's like one of those queens that a lot of them come back on All Stars to change their image, um, and I think she's the only one that effectively did that because everybody else, I was like, oh no, you still that same girl. Uh oh, you the girl oh, I thought she was. You you the girl I thought she was. <laughs> I knew you was uh, that girl. I knew you was that girl. <laughs> All of them. And Aja is the only one to me that has changed. Like, she, I thought she was a booger. I thought she was not pretty. I thought she was not that talented. And then on All Star, she changed my mind. And I'm excited to see whatever content that she brings to our presents, as well as Miss Cracker. Um, I'm not here for it. Can we fight now? Wow. I just want to grab your butt. Sorry. Do you have a last call? My last call is to TV Excellence because you thought I wasn't prepared. TV Excellence, two things. Um, the writer of Moonlight, Terrell McCraney, um, has a show coming out on OWN starring Felicia Rashad, executive produced by Michael B. Jordan. Hmm. <laughs> Bitch, you hear that star power? Oprah, Felicia Rashad, Michael B. Jordan. When is the premiere date? <laughs> And why nobody called me? Why didn't nobody call me? And like, I could be an extra in the back. Shit, I could have been a poo boy. So they just signed that deal. Um, his show is in the works and will be coming soon, and I will be as well. Wow. And also, <laughs> Issa Rae um, gagged critics of her upcoming bisexual show, Him or Her, this coming out on HBO, saying that stories that exist outside of our own bubbles do still need to be told and she plans to do it work so um yeah so yeah i thought a little fat like, when is that coming out did did she release they when still that was have coming a out? premiere date for it it's still in development you know like um deadpool was in development for 12 years so oh I, rush, I mean i know that but don't rush Issa Rae. greatness no. takes time because deadpool came out and i loved both 
But um, and we got know, a month and a half till insecure. So August twelfth. So yeah. I gotta go call the Comcast. I want to cut the cord. Okay, I need to have this off the air with you, but I want to cut the cord. <laughs> the girls is cutting the cord. Like, girl, I'm on through like one fifty. It's better than the two fifty shit. I can spend an extra hundred fifty. $100 Thank you guys for oh, listening to this episode of Fear for a Podcast. We couldn't we appreciate the court. you so much. <laughs> I'm cutting the court right now. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment below. Every time that and we were before that, you they, bought them, do that as well. I didn't think that we had to tell you guys to do that, but if we do, uh, please do that as well. <laughs> um, use lubricants outside of spit. Um, and make sure that you check out next week's episode where we will be doing shockingly mm-hmm. a first episode. Uh, we are. Shout out to you. 16. Announcement. It'll be a reverse episode. So again, make sure you subscribe, comment below, and share this episode. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>